Hello, my name is David Jones. I'm the Managing Director for Robert Half across Asia Pacific. I'd like to welcome you to our CFO Master Series. Throughout this series, we've been able to gain unprecedented access to some of the most influential CFOs across the region. The series will help to uncover what these people's main leadership qualities are, how they got to where they are in their careers, and what keeps them driving forward. I hope you enjoy the CFO Master Series. Hi, and welcome to the Robert Half CFO Master's Series. In this episode, we talk to Stuart Walters, a chartered accountant and CFO of the United Group for the Asia Pacific region. Stuart's career is an example of how the chartered accountant's designation can take you anywhere. Stuart began his career in Zimbabwe, working in the audit business unit for PricewaterhouseCoopers and then moved to Australia to work with the Northern Hemisphere Food Service Companies, which are based here in Australia. Stuart now heads up the finance area for the property and facilities management business of the United Group. It's with great pleasure that I introduce Stuart and this episode of the CFO Masters Series. Stuart Walters, welcome to the CFO Masters Series. Thank you, Stu. Good to be here. You're the CFO Asia Pacific for United Group Services, the property management and facilities management business of United Group. The company is a leading diversified services company operating in maintenance, facilities management, engineering and construction to blue chip companies. With a market cap of $3.3 billion and an annual revenue of $4 billion, United Group is one of the largest industrial services companies in Australia. It sounds like an exciting business. It is fascinating from uh, rail wagons to, uh, to mine sites to uh, large commercial buildings and property management, which is the part that I work within. As a finance professional and especially as a CFO, to what extent do the activities of the company for which you work influence your desire to work there? Fair, fairly high. Um, I think being interested in the the industry that you're in is a critical part of being a CFO. The uh, counting the beans part of it you should do in your sleep, but really understanding and enjoying um, the business and what it, what it does and what the end product is, I think is, is what makes a job go from being good to a really great, great job and a great environment. Like many of the CFOs that we've interviewed for this series, you started your career in audit. Would you recommend audit as an entry point for finance professionals starting out in their career? Absolutely. It, it's one of the more important means to an end uh, that I think one comes across. Um, I did, did my audit training, I think, at, at the beginning because I didn't have anything else uh, from a career point of view to do. Didn't, didn't have the uh, chem results to be a vet, so fell into audit. But it became an amazing learning ground. Uh, the, the wide range of industries that you get to audit, I think, and the wide range of people that you come across, I think is a fabulous training ground for, uh, for whatever you might end up doing in business. Um, just the, the, the sheer length and breadth of uh, situations that you come across um, from when you start out to when you, uh, you know, finish your audit training, second to none. You spent 12 years working in the food services industry at a very senior level, and I assume you accumulated a high degree of industry knowledge and experience along the way. Do you see yourself as a specialist finance professional, and how important is specialisation as a career strategy? I frankly think that specialisation is, is, is not that important. I think naturally if you spend more, more than a few months with an organisation and you're committed and intelligent, you're going to pick up fairly rapidly the, the basics of whatever that business is. Particularly, I think, if you're a CFO that looks to, to, to go beyond just um, the, the basic finance realm. Um, and I think on that basis that whatever industry that you choose to, to enter into, you're going to pick up a, a very good working knowledge within a short, short space of time such that you become you know, very effective in that particular industry. UGL Services employs more than 20,000 across 170 countries and as with any large services based business it's all about the people. What sort of challenges are as the CFO by a business so heavily reliant on human resources? Number one from a, a, a financial perspective it's your largest cost, cost driver uh, so managing that cost 
becomes extremely important from you know, recruitment, training, retention, um, budgeting uh, in, in an uncertain uh, labor environment. Um, it's, it's an everyday, every week um, issue that needs to be dealt with. Um, so it's keeping an eye on it all the time. You spent a number of years as a deal maker at the Westpac Institutional Bank working on private public partnerships. What was that like? Very interesting. Um, had, a, had a thoroughly enjoyable couple of years understanding banking, getting to understand um, deal making and infrastructure. I dabbled in it uh, in my previous role uh, where we had worked as the facility manager in some of these deals, but seeing it from the inside, um, I was, I must say, blown away by the, the, the sheer ingenuity and intelligence of the people that work in those sort of spheres. Given your background at the Westpac Institutional Bank, did you ever hear the sirens call of a job at an investment or a merchant bank? Uh, yes, but I think uh, within the group that I worked, frankly, there was enough grounding in, in, in reality and good, good risk management uh, that I suspect we, we worked within a, maybe a narrow sphere uh, that never bordered on something that made me start worrying and waking up at night. The early part of your career was with PwC. Do you see the large accounting firms as a breeding ground for talent in the finance profession? Absolutely. I, I, uh, you know, I owe the 10 years that I had at PwC taught me the skills that I now can put in practice and, and wide-ranging skills from managing people, man managing ambitious people, uh, clients, uh, networking, relationship um, and problem solving. A wide range of, of business needs I think you, you are equipped with as you start as an audit graduate and as you work your way through. Do you prefer to hire people from a similar background? Yes, but to a point, I, what I just described about the, uh, the benefits of uh, a background in an accounting firms, I believe in, but I think making the transition from an accounting background or an audit firm into business and, and moving up the echelons requires then a, 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 a jump from the, maybe the narrow confines of, of finance into a broader commercial world. Some people do it well, some don't. And, and certainly some people who have got a broader business background sometimes make the transition better. I don't think there's sort of one definitive answer. Uh, it's a great background working for an audit firm, but it's not a, a fail-safe um, means of being successful in, in a broad business uh, sense. What qualities make for a great finance professional? Having a, a very balanced view, I think, of risk and growth. I mean, I, I, I learned fairly early that if you become a deal breaker in everything as the, as the CFO or as the accountant, neighing everything, you won't get very far, both in the organization, you won't get very far with uh, any of your colleagues, and you're going to be in an organization that ultimately probably won't grow and be successful. Knowing where the balance is, being able to uh, intuitively understand risk and reward, I think, um, is one of the most important aspects um, of, a, of, a, of a CFO professional. As your career progressed, did you follow any particularly bright star in the sky or have you explored new opportunities as they've come up and taken a more zen approach to career development? I've had relatively few um, organisations that I've worked for and I suspect they've had, I've worked for them for fairly large chunks and in of themselves, they have been, if you will, goals. Uh, a number of uh, th those organizations, um, I've worked with a very strong CEO, and we have managed to, over the years, transform the companies. And I think those, th that's been the goal in each particular case, moving from a particular point to, a, to another, hopefully, uh, more successful point. So it's been a series of, if you will, of little sub-stars um, over my 15, 20 years. How important is mentoring? Critical. I, I have been extremely fortunate to work for three or four extremely good CEOs, all of whom have taken the time to work with me and, and I guess afford me the opportunity to be more than just the bean counter. Um, 
and I would like to think that the, the, the between us, you know, that the two of us have delivered better than if we had worked within our own little confines. Do you see yourself in turn as a mentor to your team? I hope so, and, and certainly it's something that I'm conscious of, that I've learned so much from the CEOs who have mentored me. Uh, I, I make a, a, a large effort to try and pass on some of, some of that down to the people that work for me and to help them uh, improve their, their, their skill set so that they can aspire to, um, you know, to better things. What's the most difficult part of your job? At times I think it's creating a balance between working closely with the various members of an executive, but understanding at some point you are the, if you will, the financial and at times moral compass of the organisation, and at times that can be a difficult line to tread when you're going to have to make decisions or um, put put, a fo put your foot down on something uh, that, that that becomes a, a difficult set of circumstances with your colleagues. Does that suggest then that you have to be a master of the political process within a large organisation? Yep, I, I think definitely so. You, the ability for a CFO to be completely, if you will, agnostic, I think doesn't exist anymore. Um, you, you have to uh, understand the political game, um, but I think to play it for, for a, 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 a corporate goal, um, Acknowledging that you are there as, 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 if you will, the independent, the the people, the person that people rely on, to to be the uh, the compass. What advice do you have for recent finance graduates as they embark on their careers? Stick stick with it. Um, it it's a great it's a great way to make a career. Uh, I think a CFO and a finance graduate um, is afforded uh, an access. To, a, to an organisation that often is far, far broader than the most of the, the, the functional areas within an organisation. Um, you, you, you get to see and touch and influence such a wide part of the organisation that it makes for a fascinating career. What sort of training and career development do you undertake and how do you find the time? Difficult. Uh, it, it, it tends to be a fairly uh, d disparate set of training activities. Um, the organisation has a, has a training um, plan uh, that, that from top to bottom people participate in, including you know, executive level. Uh, we, we have a number of technically focused training components each year, as well as, um, if you will, ex executive uh, leadership uh, training. Also, the, the Institute um, of Chartered Accountants provides training, which I, I and my team afford ourselves of on a regular basis. So. Mixed together with uh, a healthy amount of reading, I think sort of keeps one on top. Do you see tertiary study as something you do in the early part of your career, never to be revisited? Uh, I still harbour a desire to, to probably do some, some more executive tertiary education. I think t time and children make that increasingly more difficult. Um, certainly, I think getting your, your, your grounding in tertiary education early on is good. Um, filling in over time is, is a nice to have. You mentioned your family, how do you achieve a work-life balance? A couple of simple rules T tend to be work on, work very hard during the week, get up early and get into work very early, be back for, uh, for the evening, tend not to work on weekends uh, and uh, contrary to uh, most of the population perhaps I think Blackberries are a wonderful device and having them on 24-7 uh, keeps you uh, in, in access to, to the company and what's going on and able to react to things immediately. Um, I don't find it a distraction. I think it's a, it's a wonderful invention. We find ourselves at an interesting time in history with technology, a highly volatile world economy, the challenges of climate change and our response to it, all mingling to guarantee that the only thing we can bet on over the next decade is lots of change. How is this environment of rapid change affecting the way that CFOs manage the finances for their companies? I think uh, different, different CFOs will, will, will have different views. My, my, mine is certainly that CFOs, by virtue of their training, I, are accustomed to change, flexibility. If you think back to an audit background, you're moving from one client to another every couple of weeks, um, different set of circumstances. So I think inherently, CFOs understand that change is good, that change, change is not a threat um, and so I think a, a good CFO will be looking for change as a positive thing and looking to try and 
ensure that it's done in a, in a, in a measured, uh, balanced fashion. What sort of role would you like next? And do you see yourself occupying the CEO's chair? I would like to think at some point, yes. I think the training and, uh, as I mentioned earlier, this gradual broadening of my, my commercial acumen is a good grounding for, uh, for the CEO slot um, at some point. Uh, as I said once again earlier, that the CFO has access to such a wide, wide range of areas within an organisation that I think it is, it's a good grounding for taking on the broader general management role. So see that certainly as some, some part of the future. Um, but uh, the, next, the, the next few years certainly looking to just uh, entrench myself um, in my current role. In your experience, do CFOs make good CEOs? I don't think there's, a, there's a, a, a one answer for that. I think some CFOs, it's a natural progression um, and, and they make great CEOs, uh, but I certainly don't think it's a, it, it's a, it's a fail-safe um, progression. Stuart Walters, thanks for joining us today. Pleasure. Thank you, Stuart.